Autism is a developmental disorder that typically appears during early childhood. On the occasion of World Autism Day that falls in the month of April, MediCircle is conducting an awareness series to help build more understanding towards people suffering from this disorder. Hi, this is Amrita Priya and you are watching MediCircle. Today, we have Dr. Priyanka Parekh on our show. Dr. Priyanka Parekh is a developmental pediatrician. She had completed her MD, DNB, DCH, and FCPS in pediatrics from Mumbai, securing rank second at MD and a gold medal at FCPS examination. She then completed her MRCPCH from London and got training and experience in developmental pediatrics from both London and Mumbai. She is associated with Bal Asha Child Development Center, SRCC Children's Hospital, Seyfi Hospital, Just Lok Hospital, Cloud9 Hospital, and is an honorary at the BJ Wadia Hospital for Children. Her areas of expertise include autism, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, learning disabilities, slow learners, developmental delay, cerebral palsy, syndromes like Downs, etc. She has many presentations and publications to her credit. Welcome Dr. Priyanka to MediCircle. Thank you Amrita uh, for the kind introduction and I thank the MediCircle for inviting me to have this talk uh, during the Autism Awareness Month. Okay, so Dr. Uh, Priyanka, to begin with, what is autism? So, uh, see, when we talk of autism, it is one word, but it is a big spectrum. So, it is a, a developmental condition, and uh, children and individuals with this condition have difficulties with social interactions with other people, engaging and communicating with other people. Uh, they have limited play skills and also many of them who have a repetitive pattern in their behavior. So it is a, when I say developmental, it means that children with autism are born with autism and it is okay. related to aspects of childhood development. So when we say development, there are so many aspects to development, right? There are uh, the children develop with their physical skills and motor skills. They learn to walk, run, jump. They learn to do a lot of things with their hands. Similarly, they are learning communication skills, language, understanding people, talking to people, interacting with people, learning to play, think, feeling emotions. So autism is uh, uh, that condition which affects mainly the social as well as the communication domains of the development predominantly along with you know other patterns of behavior that we see and also many children do have you know uh, different ways in which they react to various aspects in their surroundings what we call a sensory concern. okay and what about the early signs and symptoms what are the early signs and symptoms that parents see in their children that's a very very good question because uh, it is very important to look at and uh, identify those early signs. So when I speak of diagnosing autism, I would diagnose autism uh, maybe at two years or sometimes even younger at even 18 months when I'm seeing all the signs. But there are a lot of signs which come even before that. So okay. when I say that, you know, it is a condition which affects more the social as well as the communication domain. So, you know, how does an infant communicate? and uh, engage in interactions with parents. We need to think of that. So even as early as three months, you know, typically a child will learn to recognize mother, will learn to smile at the mother. By you know, four, five, six months, there is a lot of to and fro uh, interaction happening between you know, parents and the child, between other caregivers. So they are making a lot of sounds to their parents, uh, to the children. The children are you know, uh, cooing back, gurgling back, you know, laughing. So they are you know, engaging in a lot of what we call as a to and fro interaction. As mm -hmm. they start growing older, they start understanding their name, they start you know, responding to uh, you know, uh, their name when they're called by their parents and other members in the family. But what happens in children with autism? That even as early as three, six, nine months, we see that 
this difficult aspects of social communication are missing. Okay. Children, you know, may not be really looking at their parents. They may be looking more at objects. They may be, you know, not responding or consistent back when they're called by name. So what we call like inconsistent response. Sometimes they're looking, sometimes they're not looking. And, you know, they may look as if, you know, they're more interested in objects. So if a mobile phone rings, the child may run towards a mobile. But if a parent is calling, the child may look as if the child is ignored. So, mm -hmm. you know, not responding to the name, not giving enough eye contact. And also very important aspect of communication, what is called as non-verbal communication. So, see, okay. we, we do communicate in different ways. It's not just the words that we do. Mm -hmm. We also communicate with actions, gestures. So, yeah. very important aspect of um, communication is what is called as pointing. So, even before a child learns to use the word, say, mama, the child will point at uh, the food or at what the child wants and will show, will communicate to the parent. And there is a lot of this non-verbal communication which starts developing even before the words develop. So mm -hmm. the child wants to be picked up, the child will raise hands. So the child is communicating with actions, gestures, facial expressions. But we see that in children with autism, the children are not even able to communicate, they're not pointing or even okay. responding to parents pointing to them. So, you know, showing some things, what is called as joint attention, not mm -hmm. just for need, but, you know, just to share the happiness, the joy that you get out of, you know, watching something. So if you watch the moon in the sky or, you know, yeah. you watch some doggy sleeping, you immediately point and show. And, you know, look, you also see or look, you also look at the moon. But a child with autism will not point to even share the joy of, you know, watching things or the excitement of, you know, experiencing different things in the surroundings and will also not adequately respond to others pointing out things to him or her. So this is something which we see is, you know, missing or, you know, it's inconsistent. It's not adequately done. So a lot of these aspects would, you know, uh, what we call as show us the red flags. So okay. even if we have not seen a lot of other features, which may, you know, eventually evolve. But if we start seeing these aspects, when I talk of words, a child would generally babble by six months, nine months by one year a child is you know speaking at least one meaningful word but if mm -hmm. we say that the child is not yet speaking i mean you know the first words which come by the first year of life and as a child grows older by two years the child is joining two words like you know mama do do papa come papa said if no we don't see those two word phrases even okay. that would be a red flag for us so we really need to pick up those early signs of autism okay and what about diagnosis? Like, uh, how is autism diagnosed? Are there specific tests for that? So, uh, see, when I said that autism is a developmental condition and children are born with it, so it is not a disease or it is not an infection, which you get, you know, typically with germs infecting your body, like how we say typhoid, hua, malaria, hua. So it is not something which is caused by an external infection. But yeah. it is something that the child is born with and there is a genetic basis to it and there are a lot of factors, even what we call as genetic as well as uh, environmental factors and a combination of these factors. Yeah. And when I say, you know, it is not something which, you know, the child has got as an acquired infection, there is no medical cure to it. So there are no medicines to cure autism and uh, again, there are no tests to diagnose autism, like how we say you do a blood test and you are, you know, you get that malaria report on your blood uh, test report. So there are no tests to diagnose autism like that, like a blood test or a CT scan or an MRI. It is mainly okay. a diagnosis which is based on, you know, the behavioral pattern of the child on, uh, you know, the aspects of development that we see as development in pediatricians. Uh, okay. So, uh, you know, they are based on certain criteria or features that we see and then there are again certain uh, specific tools which we can use to, you know, corroborate all those findings. So, it is mainly a behavioral uh, evaluation based on the features. Okay. So, you said that there are no specific uh, medications for cure as such for autism. But what is the best treatment option for children suffering from autism? So, uh, you know, when, I, as we discussed that, you know, it is not that we, by giving medicines, we can make the child talk 
or we can make the child interact or engage with people there are a lot of other interventions what you know are required and it is like a multidisciplinary intervention mm -hmm. so it is multidisciplinary because there are a number of professionals involved and also there is a role of medications and some select uh, individuals where you know okay. we, yeah, we decide that yeah this particular child or individual would also need in addition medications to the rest of the interventions we do okay. so there are a lot of different therapies that are used to help with you know communication to help with the child interact engage with people there are a lot of different behavioral interventions to help with engagement with help with the play skills uh, especially you know an important aspect in autism is what is called as a pretend play skills where uh, you know the child learns to do that imaginative pretend play where mm -hmm. uh, you know uh, pretending to feed a, uh, a baby or pretending to give a bath to uh, you know the some some of the animal toys or pretending to do something with your kitchen set so there are a lot of interventions to work on a lot of these different skills so there are different therapies like speech therapy there is occupational therapy a lot of different behavioral interventions and again there may be some children who may have associated what we call as comorbid conditions what we call okay. comorbid medical conditions as well as behavioral conditions like uh, you know extreme hyperactivity or extreme aggression or you know uh, extreme self harming behaviors so you know again uh, when we when i talk of medical there might be some children who may have epilepsies or even uh, gut related issues so we may have to use medications to help and you know control those comorbid conditions that we see so it is it is a combination and again it is not something like a one size fits all so all right. uh, it is not something that you just write a prescription and give but we every child is just one word but every child with autism is different and okay. we need to tailor the interventions for that particular child okay so there is individualistic approach uh, towards treating absolutely. children absolutely okay. yes all right so this is how like autism is dealt with by parents as well as caregivers and health professionals so that children can lead as much as normal life as as it is possible in a manageable way yes and it is so important that uh, you know the interventions as uh, we uh, discussed earlier picking up early signs and intervening early so even if, before i make a diagnosis of autism but if I'm seeing some signs, I can always intervene. I don't have to wait for a diagnosis or a name to be given to the condition. Yes. But if I'm even picking up signs, I can always start and I should always start intervening. So it is very important for parents to, uh, you know, if they are seeing any red flags or if they are even picking up some concerns mm -hmm. to immediately Speak, meet their doctor, meet a developmental pediatrician to understand, you know, understand the different aspects of uh, development to also understand whether we should start with interventions or wait. And it's all, as I said, it's always important to start with the early intervention rather than waiting. So they understand the importance of early intervention. And then yeah. it's important to even monitor the evolving behaviors. Further okay. going on, what is most important in addition to these interventions is a supportive family, a supportive environment, people to have acceptance and understanding of the condition, as well as with schooling, what we call as inclusive schooling. So yeah. it is not just, uh, you know, limited to the child and the therapist and the parents, mm -hmm. but it's, it's, you know, the broader understanding at, you know, the level of the society because a child needs support throughout. So it is not about just doing a skill in the therapy room, but when the child is, you know, out in the world, out in the school, out with other children, out with the teachers and, you know, in different social situations, you know, people also have an understanding you know, of the condition and also understanding of the skills as well as challenges that the child has. Uh, it, will, it will really go a long way to help the child. Yeah. What we call is inclusive advice. Yes. acceptance and it what i gather is that the whole uh, society as a whole should be supportive because such society for autism children comprises of not only parents and caregivers but also teachers friends 
uh, parents of friends and other non-teaching staff in school. So everyone should be understanding towards them so that they develop yes. healthy, happy beings. It's, a, it's opportunities. It's the opportunities to participate in, you know, different activities in the school, whether it is sports or whether it is any anything related to drama and even further going on, you know, uh, uh, training them even from vocational point of view, job opportunities, inclusion in the, uh, you know, professional job uh, arena. So it's, it's a long way and we need uh, the understanding uh, of all people of the society to you know help these individuals okay. to maximize the uh, ability to their full potential. Yeah. So thank you, Dr. Parikh, for your ins insightful uh, views on autism because uh, programs like this are going to really be very educative for the society because children with autism are living in the society and everyone should be understanding towards them to really help them grow and bloom. So thank you Absolutely. very much for your expert opinion. And, and thank you, Amrita, for inviting me. And I thank you, Mary Circle, you know, for taking these initiatives, you know, to spread the world across, you know, a larger uh, society. Yes. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm.